Hello and welcome to this quick little tutorial thing. Popularity for my add-on seems to have exploded a bit beyond what I expected, so I thought now is probably the best time to create a little tutorial showing off how exactly you use this. So here we go. So first things first, installing the add-on, file, preferences, add-ons, and then install, and just select your add-on, .py, and install. And you just gotta tick this little box here and you're all set up. To use the add-on, you just go to the Add Mesh and fill it gear. There you go. Okay, so first up, let me show you how to create a few different types of gears that can be created using this add-on. Uh, the first type of gear is a spur gear, which from my understanding is just two gears that sit next to each other on a plane. So let's create another gear that will sit next to this one, and it's twice as big. Do that. Create a new gear, we want to set the radius to be twice as large, and the number of teeth to be twice as many. Then, just because we can, let's also set the whole size to be relatively the same as the smaller one. And just move this off to the side. If we wanted to animate this so when we rotate one, it rotates the other, uh, all we would do, or well, the simplest way to do that, is to copy rotation. I'll show you a more complicated way later on with. Uh, the bevel gears. Okay, so we only really really care about the Z axis, so we want it on the Z, and we also want to invert that. Also, just because it makes it easy, let's add add to mix, and let's set the target to be the smaller gear. So you'll always want the slowest moving gear copying from the fastest moving gear when you use the copy rotation. There's a way around that, but as I said, I'll show you that on the bevel gear. So. Um, now that we have that, we can rotate it around and you can see it all meshes together fine. Um, if you want this to line up perfectly, sometimes you can just snap to grid and it will just work, but in this case it isn't. So, simple math to have all of this line up. We only want to offset this by half of a tooth. So the easiest way to do that is 360, because 60 degrees in a circle. And then you want to divide that by the number of teeth, in this case 24. And then you want to divide that by 2, so that would be half of a tooth. There you go. Now it all fits together perfectly and meshes almost perfectly. The next type of gear we have is a helical gear, or as I like to call it, a twisted gear. Because all it really is, is a gear that has been twisted slightly. Uh, you can easily create this by just defining the angle you want it to be twisted at. This is in degrees, so if we wanted it to be twisted by 45 degrees, we could just type that in. The twist is relative to the height, so you see this isn't twisted by 45 degrees between the top and bottom of this gear, but if we set the height to 1, it will be. You can increase the detail level as well with the layers. If we just twist this up, let's just twist it really far up, let's say 180. Uh, when it's twisted like this, you can clearly see the poly count of how many layers this is sliced into. You can easily increase that by just increasing the detail whatever is required for your setup. Uh, you could also twist the gear in both directions. It will twist half one way and half the other way. Just lower this down a bit so it doesn't look so crazy. Um, this is also, this, this middle twist may not always be there. You can change the detail down to make that a bit flatter, if that is something. Uh, anyway, you could also invert. So if we are creating two gears that we want to join together, you've got to remember that invert. So this is our first one. Now if we create a second one, in two different gears, uh, we, can, we have to flip the, we have to invert it. So with that inverted, if we had it over here, offset the teeth so it meshes together correctly, this should be fitting perfectly. Um, I won't bother animating this, you can do that. On the next type of gear we have is a bevel gear, or crown gear. I'm not entirely sure if there's a technical difference between those two words, but, you know, bevel or crown, as far as I understand, you could just use them interchangeably. Basically, what a bevel or crown gear is, is two gears that connect at a 90 degree offset. Um, you can offset it further, but or more or less, but with this add-on, it'll only be a 90 degree offset. So it's all I've got working. So basically, to have that, we just take bevel gear, uh, then we have the connecting gear rate, rate, the connecting gear radius. So in this case, let's create two gears that connect each to each other, and this we'll have a one connecting to a three. So this gear has a radius of one, and we want to create one with a radius of three. So 
that's all you need to do on your first gear. Uh, also note, you can still have twist angles working with this just fine. However you want these to go, always remember to protect the invert on the second gear though. Um, but yeah, everything just works interchangeably. So let's create the second gear. That by remembering this one has a radius of three. So we want to set that to be three and we want to have three times as many teeth. We also are connecting it to a gear which has a radius of 1. So you've got to remember to change that. And just because we can, let's also change the whole size just as it's interest. Change that to a 2 and a 3. I don't have any clamping happening to any of these variables. I could set it up, but it would be more of a hassle to create than it would be to just don't do things that are wrong. Um, anyway, so. There we go, that should be all the correct information. So next we can just light it up. Here, the mapping there, there we go. And then let's just offset that by a tooth. And there we go, that should fit absolutely perfectly. Should be barely touching. Anyway, um, if they are touching, I have tolerance settings, which I'll explain later. So next let's animate this, and let's animate this in a more complicated way than I did with just the default spur gear. Um, with this one I'm going to be using what, yeah, copy transformation. Um, copy transformation fixes a whole lot of problems that copy rotation does, although it is also a lot more complicated to use. Uh, the first problem it fixes, and sorry if this gets a bit technical, but it is a problem which you may not have even noticed that copy rotation even did. If you've done it, if you've been using copy rotation with round things such as gears, because gears are symmetrical around an axis, which you can think of that as you can slice it up like you could slice up a pizza around the center, and each wedge of that pizza is symmetrical depending on how many times you're slicing it. So that's basically why you don't notice this problem the majority of the time. But the problem itself is if you had a gear that is rotating at half the amount as another gear, or you know something copying the rotation at half the amount of something else, uh, when you rotate that first thing, you can rotate it 180 degrees. But once you get to, sorry, you can rotate it 360 degrees or more, but once you get to 180 degrees, the thing that's copying the rotation will jump back to zero. So again, if it's copying at half the rotation, the 0.5 influence, once it gets halfway around, it, once the original rotates halfway around, the one that's copying will jump back to zero and then continue back to halfway. So every time it goes halfway around, goes back to zero, halfway around, goes back to zero. Anyway, uh, obviously if you had it at point or a third, third of an influence, 0.3 repeating, or 3.3 repeating, whatever, um, it'll only go a third of the way around and then continually do that. So as I said, you don't notice that much as much of a problem with gears. But anyway, uh, this fixes that by simply ticking this tick box here. There you go. Uh, the next thing that this does is it allows you to map different axes to each other. Uh, also, I feel like the local space thing works a bit better. You'll want to turn that on, otherwise you might have some gimbal locking issues. I'm not going to explain what that is if you don't know. Um, just interesting things that happen when rotating stuff in XYZ. Yeah, anyway, so yeah, for this case, um, the next thing that it also solves is being able to rotate greater than one times. So I could have something copy a rotation and spin twice as fast instead of half as fast. So well, let's set this up. Uh, we have this one, which is rotating around in the Z axis, and this one, which is rotating around in local Z axis. Set this up, we select the gear we want to copy the information from, we set both of these to rotation, and then we can just set the Z axis of this one to be a 1. Uh, and then for this one, we want to just set that as a 2, as the maximum of its local Z axis. So basically what this is going to do is for every 1 degree this one rotates, this will rotate 2 degrees in its local axis. Um, there you go, except, you know, it's backwards. We want this to be negative 2 degrees, and now it should line up. Um, it is not lining up, and that's because I, I recorded this so many times and I keep making a mistake. Um, <laughs> I'm doing a 3 to 1 gear ratio, so this should be a 3, not a 2. And there we go. 
Now it matches up perfectly. So let's just take a little closer look all up in here. And there you go. It shouldn't have any parts that intersect with each other at all within this rotation. Okay, so the last type of gear is the internal gears. So yeah, this type of gear is very buggy. It is extraordinarily complicated, well more so than I could have ever imagined. Um, but basically, I just tacked it into this thing in the la as a last minute sort of addition. It's the thing that made me realize that I need to basically toss away all of the code, all thousand lines of code that I've done to create this thing, and start again from scratch in a completely different way. Optimize everything, make everything just just far more better in every imaginable way. Um, yeah, so it, it's there, but I do not recommend using it. It's, again, very buggy. You can give it a try if you like. Um, you create one by just basically setting the radius to be negative a value. Uh, but it's a little bit more complicated because it requires this largest and smallest gear radius. Um, it basically has to be larger than the smallest and, well, larger than the largest as well in ways that are sort of complicated to explain without going into a half an hour tangent about you know, how exactly this works mechanically and all that um, and what exactly all of the problems are. But yeah, I'm just not going to go into that. But um, it's going to be bigger than these by some amount, and it's really hard to find exactly how much. So uh, let's just say that's a three. Uh, these two also have to be... Do they have to be different sizes? I don't think they do. Um, so if I do that, I set this to a negative three, and, well, because it's a three, let's times three with the amount of teeth. Uh, that seems to be working. Sure, why not? Uh, so the largest and smallest are the same. I believe this should work, but no, no, they do not. Uh, you do not want to set these to be both the same thing. You want this to be some amount larger. In this case, because I got this as three, let's just set it as a two, and yet yeah, it didn't break. Uh, but basically, you can see that change the end of the tooth. The uh, smallest connecting gear radius changes the lower part of the tooth, however you want to define that. It, perspective wise let's call that lower and this let's call this higher um anyway uh if you do not have things set correctly you'll get an error saying some sort of a math problem maybe divided by zero or some sort of a thing like that um it just means you want to mess with these values to adjust them whatever let's just create an internal gear to put in here maybe it works maybe it doesn't oh great this looks like it should work um let me just quickly create a rotation thing so we can see what it does. I believe this is a divided by three. I'd say three times bigger, right? Probably. Uh, we do not need to invert the axis with this one. Uh, we will say add that way. I'll just offset that a bit. This looks like it's working. There we go. Yeah, yeah, this is working fine. Um, as far as I can tell, there doesn't seem to be any intersections. Oh no, it looks like it might be slightly intersecting here. So that's the stuff you've got to watch out for when doing internal gears. It just means you've got to set the largest gear to be larger. Um, it should correct that by how much you need to set. I don't know. That's that's why i got to build this whole thing again from scratch. It's, it's very arbitrary for what the values should be in, in this version. Um, a lot of math formulas and junk i got to figure out. But anyway. Uh, with a lot of tweaking, you should be able to get this at least minimally working. Okay, now uh, let's explain some things which didn't quite get covered in the different types of gears. Um, the first thing we have here is tolerance. So we have backslash and clearance as two different types of tolerances. Uh, basically, one of them... Whoop, shift is that goes a little slower. One of them is basically the thickness of a tooth, and the other one is the depth of that little valley. Basically the point of tolerances is if you are 3D printing this and your printer, filament, whatever you are doing does not have the sort of accuracies that may be required, 
you can just add a little bit of backslash and a little bit of clearance. So the gears will fit together without jamming. Uh, another thing I should mention about the tolerances is they are measured in distance. So if you were using a 3D printer and you knew how many Blender units of accuracy you have, whatever you send units, set units to within Blender, uh, you could easily just type that into these values, and there you go. The next thing we have is the smallest connecting gear radius. Uh, this is actually a little bit of an important thing. Probably should have been mentioned at the very beginning of the video because of how important it is. But basically, you do not want to be using a radius that is smaller than the smallest connecting gear radius. If you do use a radius that is smaller than the recommended smallest, or whatever you have set, uh, basically it looks like this. So these two gears do not mesh together. Got a bit of an overlap there. Um, also got a bit of an overlap there, yeah. So they just don't really work. 